In this video, I'm going to show how to highlight text in this image. This is a JPEG image in LibreOffice Impress, which is a free open source alternative to Microsoft PowerPoint or uh, Apple's, um, I think it's called Keyframe or something like that. I'm forgetting the exact name for Apple's competing product, but basically presentation software. So here I'm going to show you, this is LibreOffice Impress. Um, let me just show the about for it. Okay, so this is LibreOffice. It's a free open source alternative to Microsoft Office that I use fairly frequently. And one can do a lot of effects with it, given a little bit of fiddling with the um, program, with its controls. So what I've done here is I've taken a image a uh, screenshot of The Call of Cthulhu by the horror writer H.P. Lovecraft, and I've made that a background in this um, uh, image. And so here we have the properties for the slide. So it's 16 by 9, kind of high definition aspect ratio. It's a landscape, and you select the bitmap, and you can actually insert an image as I've done here, and that's the background. Now what we'd like to do with this is as I'm speaking, we would like to highlight the text I'm speaking in order. Uh, so I can make videos with this or do other things. So it, when you're speaking the text, the, the viewer can also see that what, what I'm talking about. So let's just show how it works right now. Uh, so The Call of Cthulhu by H.P. Lovecraft found among the papers of the late Francis Whalen Thurston of Boston. Of such great powers or beings, there may be conceivably a survival, a survival of a hugely remote period when consciousness was manifested, perhaps in shapes and forms long since withdrawn before the tide of advancing humanity, forms of which poetry and legend alone have caught a flying memory and called them gods, monsters, mythical beings of all sorts and kinds. Algernon Blackwood, the horror in clay. So that's the start of the story. Um, Algernon Blackwood was a famous horror writer from the late 1800s. Um, but now, how did I actually do this? Um, what I've done here is each of these yellow highlights is a line. So for example, here you insert the line using this line icon. And I'll show how to do this in a minute, but I just want to set up how this is done. So each of these highlights is a line. And what I have done, and I'll show again how to do this, is I've changed the default line to have the yellow color, and that's the color often used for highlights. I've changed from zero transparency to 60 or 50 percent, and that means I can actually see the text in the image through the highlight, but I still have the highlight, and I made these much wider so they cover all of the text here. So let's show how to do this for another paragraph or another section of text. So I start here and I'm putting in a line. So notice I see the default settings for the line. So the first thing that I do is I make it yellow. Second thing that I do is I make the line much wider. So I'm going to try 85 printers points. And the third thing that I'm going to do is make it transparent. So we'll just try 50%. Now you can in fact see that, you can see the printed text in the JPEG image here through the yellow. So you have a genuine highlighting effect. The final thing we need to do is make it appear and disappear. We do that through the animation controls here. So this is properties and a bunch of other things. Uh, on the side here we want to do animation. You can see the animations for the previous sections of text. So we want to add an animation that puts the um, puts the highlight, visualizes the highlight, makes the highlight appear. But we also want to make it disappear as we move on to the remaining text, which would be Theosophists have guessed, etc., etc. So we add again, but this time we make it an exit instead of an entrance, and we make it disappear. All right, so now let's do the whole shebang. And we start from the first slide again. So this would be your presentation that you might give to an audience, or you might capture it as a video for YouTube or some other video sharing site. So let's go. The Call of Cthulhu by H.P. Lovecraft, found among the papers of the late Francis Whalen Thurston of Boston. Of such great powers or beings there may be conceivably a survival, a survival of a hugely remote period when 
Consciousness was manifested, perhaps in shapes and forms, long since withdrawn before the tide of advancing humanity, forms of which poetry and legend alone have caught a flying memory and called them gods, monsters, mythical beings of all sorts and signs. Algernon Blackwood, The Horror in Clay. There we go. The most merciful thing in the world, I think, is the inability of the human mind to correlate all its contents. We live on a placid island of ignorance in the midst of black seas of infinity, and it was not meant that we should voyage far. The sciences, each straining in its own direction, have hitherto harmed us little, but some day the piecing together of dissociated knowledge will open up such terrifying vistas of reality and of our frightful position therein that we shall either go mad from the revelation or flee from the deadly light into the peace and safety of a new dark age. And that's fairly typical Lovecraft language. So now we end the presentation. So just to recap what I'm doing here is I am using a line in Impress, which is a free open source alternative to PowerPoint. I'm putting that line through the center of the text I want to highlight. I am making that line through using the properties uh, button or icon here. I make that line yellow. I make it transparent about 50% or 60% so I can see the text in the image below and I make it much wider to cover the text than its default size. So that's how I put these on there and then how do I animate them so they turn on and off as I'm speaking. Uh, I didn't mention it but to turn them on and off I have to hit the key when I'm changing to speak the next section of text. So I hit an arrow key or something like that on the on the keyboard of my uh, computer, and, or I could be clicking a button on a presentation control, that sort of thing, and that activates the animations. The animations are controlled through this animation pane here. So you click on the animation, you see the animations. So there is a command for each of these lines, so you'll see horizontal line. We enter and we appear, and then we exit when I hit the next um, Sorry, when we hit the next uh, key here. Um, so I think that's about it. Um, let's see. Uh, let me check something else here. Um, yeah, one thing. Okay. One thing that I didn't show in my example adding is that if you want it to transition very smoothly from one to another without hitting a key, in the entrance for the next one, so this is the entrance for by HP. Lovecraft, instead of having to click to make it happen, I can select from this pull down here, not on click, but with previous. So that means when I hit the arrow key that makes the highlighting of the Call of Cthulhu disappear, I immediately highlight HP Lovecraft. I did not do that with my example where I showed you exactly or mostly how to do it. So let's, let's just show that again. All right, so I hit the arrow key at this point, it's highlighted and I would say The Call of Cthulhu, hit the arrow key, it immediately advances to By HP Lovecraft. I hit the arrow key again, it de-highlights the text I'm no longer speaking, and again it highlights this, so I would say Found Among the Papers of the Late Francis Wayland Thurston of Boston. I hit the arrow key, which removes the highlight there and creates a new one. So let me show you how to edit my, my final example and show how to do this on when you're actually creating this. So let me get out of this, all right? So let's go down to um, this one. And right now, the default is on click. So that's why I didn't see it transition smoothly like that in my first example. So I can go to with previous, and now what's gonna happen is when I uh, deselect or I de-highlight the horror in clay, it will actually do that. So it will actually highlight the final paragraph. So let's start again. I'm not going to recite everything, I'm just going to show kind of the process. So I hit the arrow key, I get the Call of Cthulhu. I hit the arrow key, now it highlights by HP Lovecraft. Again, again, Algernon Blackwood, the horror in clay. Now when I hit the arrow key, it removes the highlight from the horror in clay and it highlights the opening paragraph of The Call of Cthulhu, which is one of H.P. Lovecraft's most famous horror stories. So that is, in a nutshell, how to do this with LibreOffice Impress. Uh, the controls, much of this is the same. In a previous video, I've shown how to do some of the same types of thing in 
LibreOffice Writer, which is their Microsoft Word clone, and uh, you can probably do it in their spreadsheet and other things, although I haven't investigated that. However, if you want to create a presentation, either that you give personally with some text, and you want to read the text, that's really important perhaps, bulleted text, something like that, to an audience or to, to an audience o over YouTube or the internet, this is a, a fairly easy way to very simply add highlights to a still image, a bitmapped image, like a JPEG or a PNG file or Windows bitmap, all of these kind of formats. Um, you can do it this way fairly quickly, and you have a lot of fine control over what happens. Uh, it's uh, one of the issues if you were to use, first of all, the editor I like to use, GIMP, has a very awkward way to add highlights to an image, and you have to actually create a series of images with the appropriate text highlighted, whereas this method means I can go through, I just need one image, and I just go through with the, the line components overlaid as I showed here. So in a nutshell, this is a very easy way with a free open source program. You just download it from the LibreOffice website. It is very large, so you need a high bandwidth connection somewhere to download it and put it on your system. LibreOffice is available for Windows. This is Windows 10. It is available for Mac OS X, X the Macintosh operating system, and for many flavors of Unix and the Linux, which is basically a type of Unix operating system. Uh, let me just give a couple pieces of information and I'll close the video. Um, so this video was produced on Tuesday, March 10th, 2020. And um, I will have a little add-on in a moment for uh, information about us. And if you want to support our activities, uh, we'd be glad or contact us uh, how to do so. That concludes this video tutorial. If you like this video, please take a moment to click like. Please click subscribe and the notification bell if you would like to receive more content from us. We welcome constructive feedback and comments. Mathematical Software is developing products and services to automate data analysis, reducing the risks of costly errors and improving results. If you want to support our work, you can subscribe on our Patreon page. This is the URL for our Patreon page. Scan the QR code in the lower right corner with your smartphone to get the Patreon link. Our Patreon link is also in the show notes below.